Is this new version of Task Force X doomed to fail before they even get started? Well, let's hop into the pages of Suicide Squad issue number three and find out together, shall we? So, picking up from where the last issue left off, Osita, one of the newest members of the Suicide Squad, had killed the puppet dictator that the team was sent on in to extract. Naturally, Deadshot, a veteran of the team, is crap in his pants right now in fear. He doesn't know if he's going to be the next to get killed, or if Mr. Locke, their new handler, is going to blow up his head for his failure. Very begrudgingly, Floyd ends up backing Osita's version of events. Oh yeah, we went in the tunnel and then we were ambushed. It was really terrible. Oh, you know, shame you couldn't see it, boss. Locke clearly wants to blow up the heads of his team, but killing them on their first mission would probably be bad for business, and as such, he only chooses to shock them half to death using their nano implants. Now, if you're like me reading this, you're probably thinking, well, the puppet dictator's dead. That means this mission is scrapped, right? The Suicide Squad can go home. No, apparently Mr. Locke still very much wants Team B to go ahead with their mission of assassinating the sitting president. Harley is technically the senior member heading up Team B, but unlike Deadshot, who all the other newbies actually did kind of fall in line behind, even if they made fun of him. No one's even talking to Harley. In fact, she pretty much gets left in the dust as all of these new people show off their powers. There's Deadly Six, who can literally weaponize the six deadly sins, but not Lust, because that would just be gross. Then you got Jog, their super speedster, who can move at lightning fast speeds, but only for a short amount of time before he's got to stop and recharge. So basically, he's a budget basement flash. What you gonna do? Now, well, Team B is actually making a lot of progress with their mission. In the ocean, we check back on in with Finn and King Shark. They're supposed to find an exit strategy for our team, but they can't stop fighting each other. Shark ate Finn's brother, who he had a psychic link with, and now that they know they're far enough underwater where Locke can't see them, Finn decides to return King Shark one of his teeth, literally leading to blood in the water and King Shark getting torn apart by other sharks. Oh, geez, I guess he wasn't much of a king to begin with, right? He inspired no loyalty amongst his subjects. Also, don't be so sad that he's dead. Maybe now he can finally be resurrected as the Ron Funches version of the character. Wouldn't that be nice? That'd be nice. Speaking of Finn, as we discovered this issue, his telekinetic powers move beyond just fish. In fact, he's able to calm link his entire team together so they can speak without Locke hearing them. They're very unsure about what to do with Deadshot, if he can be trusted, or if he won't just turn around and sell them out to Locke for brownie points, but the longer they're inside his head, they can kind of feel his trauma. Floyd is a sad man, after all, used as a blunt weapon by uncaring masters over and over again, sent on so many suicide missions, he wouldn't know how to live even if you let him. Osita and the others roll the dice, though, let Floyd into their little psychic powwow and decide that maybe they're going to try and save him from himself. First, though, they're going to have to meet up with Team B for the final push at the President's Mansion. And it's right around here things start to get really interesting. Deadshot sends Harley away to guard the door while he fires the killing shot at the president, only he didn't really try to hit her. He just wanted it to sound good. In fact, as we further find out, the lady president is actually the mother of the Airy, the non-binary flying hero that makes up the new members of the Suicide Squad. Why Ari is also dating Wink on the team, which technically makes this her first time meeting her partner's parents, which has got to be super awkward under the circumstances. But wait, you're probably saying, isn't that super convenient that they were able to save one of their own team members' mothers? They didn't know that they were going to get taken captive by the Suicide Squad. Well, here's the twist, they actually did. As Osita tells it, the Suicide Squad Task Force X has been taken over from the inside. No longer are they even pretending to serve the whims of the government. Instead, they're serving some sort of nefarious private interest. Her and her team had hoped to infiltrate the squad so that they could sort things out from that end. The only problem is they weren't dealing with Amanda Waller like they had hoped. The wall might have been a monster, but she was a monster of habit. Locke is something different, though. How different, you're probably wondering to yourself. Well, as the comic winds down, we discover that Locke actually has the same sort of implants inside of him that the team does. And when he failed this mission, his paymasters choose to shock him. And so that was Suicide Squad issue number three, everybody, and once again, Tom Taylor is showing us all that this is not a fluke. He really is intending to tell this sort of interesting layered Suicide Squad story. One where the stakes are high, anyone can die, lots of people are holding secrets from one another, and there's no telling where all of this can go next. All of it just feels so fresh and different with this infusion of brand new heroes and brand new sets of powers while also feeling very familiar and in line with the classic Ostrander stuff. Yep, I am definitely a fan. I definitely cannot wait to see where things go from here. I would give this a much-deserved 8.5 out of 10. 
Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.